All right, everyone, it is three o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for coming today. Um, <clears throat> my name is Kyle Burkett, and I'm a senior librarian with the San Jose Public Library. I'm the co-chair of the annual graphic novel making contest, which runs every June to August and is open to artists of all ages. Um, today, we're going to be speaking with illustrator uh, Rafael Lopez, whose book, Maybe Something Beautiful, is one of our featured selections uh, in this year's Silicon Valley Reads. Um, as we go along, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A chat on the bottom of your Zoom window, and I will do my best uh, to moderate and we'll try to answer those questions when appropriate. And I just want to thank uh, Silicon Valley Reads for coordinating this program, as well as Mr. Lopez for agreeing, agreeing to join us this afternoon. Uh, Rafael, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kyle. It's a real pleasure. Thank you to um, Silicon Valley Reads for inviting me. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, this is one of those unique opportunities that I have to actually share some of the secrets from the studio. You're actually looking at my studio. This is where things happen. Uh, so um, as, as uh, Kyle said, I'm, I'm an illustrator. I'm from Mexico. And we're going to start. We're going to separate this into a different thing. We're going to start with a little PowerPoint presentation where I'll show you a little bit of where I'm, who I am, where I'm from, and how this whole thing started with the, uh, the, the murals, because everybody wants to know, how, how do you start doing community murals? So whenever you are ready, I'm ready to uh, screen share with you guys and show you some fun photos. Are you ready, ready to go? So I'm ready. Let's do it. Absolutely. Go ahead and take it away. All right. Here we go, guys. Okay, so this whole thing is about based on the book tonight. And uh, I think it's really wonderful that you guys are joining us. So um, artists come in different shapes. This is me when I was a kid. This is my sister. I think we're trying to pretend to be Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo. I don't know. This is when I was a little kid. And I started drawing since I was a little, little tiny, tiny kid. Um, my parents were architects and they had an opportunity to send me to live in England with some friends that were painters. So this is me at 11 years old. I'm sure some of you are 11 years old tonight. And I lived there the whole summer. And then when I was ready to go back to Mexico, I just packed my bags and I shook their hands and I said, thank you guys. I had a wonderful time. This is a wonderful country. Got to go. And the painter said, what, what you're going to go empty handed. What do you, what do you mean? He says, you're going to make a book. You're going to do a book about your memories and your experiences in another country. And remember, I'm an artist and I have a basement where there's a print press. So you are going to go down here the, la the last week and we're going to do a book. So I'm sharing with you guys my very official, very first book when I was 11 years old of my experiences living in England. Now that I'm older, I live in a beautiful town called San Diego. I'm sure some of you have visited San Diego right by the coast, but I'm not, I don't live in that part. I don't... I used, I live in a place where I, I purchased a warehouse that is now my studio, and that place used to be very, very gray. And I even shared some photos with you. This is what it looked like when I came. So uh, it made me wonder, you know, what can I do? Is there something that we as neighbors can do about this, this, this uh, beautiful town? So what I did is I actually fixed my, my warehouse that I purchased, and I filled myself with all these colors that I brought in the, in the art store and in Mexico. Because color, and especially bright colors, brought me a lot of happiness. So I fill my studio with all this happiness and color. And yet when I went outside, you know, the neighborhood still looked like this, right? So we had to do something about it. We have to come together as neighbors, as friends, and try to solve the problem. And then I realized that this area of downtown is surrounded by all these art schools. There's the architectural school, there's uh, the San Diego Community College where all these really bright young minds, very talented minds are doing creative, beautiful work. And I thought, what if I go talk to them? What if we go talk to them and invite them over to try to change the neighborhood? Just not sit in the classroom, but go outside in the streets and try to do things. So what we did is like on the weekends, we started it with the easiest thing, which was, you know, get a bunch of uh, tile. And it's really fun. I don't know if you've ever done this. And we started adding some color and tiles around the, the tree rings because they were kind of dull, they were gray, and why not add a little color to our neighborhood, right? Then we thought, hey, you know those trash cans and all those San Diego gas and electric boxes that are really dirty and full of like tagging and all that, why don't we just create these beautiful three-dimensional pieces? And that's what they did. We asked, asked permission from the, uh, the, the gas company and they said, please go ahead, you know, you seem to be talented. So this is some of the samples that some of the things that we did in our neighborhood just to brighten up our day. You know, just to bring a little happiness and a little color to our community. 
We noticed that some people also were waiting for the bus or waiting for a friend to pick them up. So we thought, why not design these beautiful benches that we can put all over the neighborhood so people can sit and chat and make friends with other people. And we created a bunch. We invited friends and we invited some of the students and people were just jumping at this opportunity to do it. And these are some of the samples of these benches that we created, very wild and different. And it was great. Eventually we sold this and we raised more money to buy, our, to buy more paint and more tile. So this is some of the tile that we did. And this kind of trigger an idea. This is one of those tiles where you go and actually you paint something and you put it on a kiln and you burn it and then we put it together. And I thought, you know, I like this idea of collaborating all of us together and creating something bigger, just like we did it here, but even bigger because this is about 12 feet, you know, across by about seven feet tall. I thought, what if we do this and make it more like community murals? So that's where the idea began. So what's a community mural? It's a mural where you have to go to a place, a neighborhood, and ask the person, uh, uh, the, the person that's the owner of the um, actual property, if they would like to see a beautiful painting on their walls. This is one example. And, and you can see how big they are. This is a little intimidating. I mean, I'm six feet tall, and you can see that this thing makes me look like a little tiny, you know, little orbiguita, right? Like a little ant. So the first thing that you need to do is design something. And we'll get into this later on, you guys. This is what's called gridding. This is something that I did. Was, this was gigantic. It was 60 feet across by about 25 feet high. But this is only about the, what you're seeing there is only about the size of a piece of legal paper. But then, as you can see, those lines, I grid it. And then every, every one of those little squares, I blow it up to the massive side of the wall where I'm going to be painting. And then I only focus in that square. If you see how it's number one, two, something, one, two, three, four, five across, and then up and down, it's also one, two, three, four, five. I just find the reference numbers and then I go, okay, this is the one that I'm going to work on. And this is the easiest way to transfer your tiny little drawing into something gigantic on a wall, you guys. So gridding is the most important thing you, not, you need to learn. These are the tools that you use to grid. As you can see, that metal thing is full of this blue powder with a string. And what you do with that, you actually have two friends. One of them takes one end and the other one takes the other one. Full of, and they, they pull it really, really tight against the wall. And then I go in the middle and I pull it back like a, like a, like a bow and arrow. And then I let it go. And when thing snaps into the wall, it leaves a blue, perfectly blue straight line. And then we move up or down. And that's how you create it. You do it this, you snap this way and then you snap that way. And then you create this beautiful grid on this giant wall. And of course, you see me holding a chalk, a piece of chalk. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think that string is doing on the bottom? Why, why that string, right? Well, I'll tell you what, it's a secret. Because you see that perfect line I'm drawing right there. It's, you see me now with a sketch. I'm holding the sketch with a grid. And you can see it's only like a tiny little legal piece of paper, right? But now I'm going to blow it up gigantic into the wall. But when you see that curve, you go, wow, how's Mr. Lopez able to create that perfect curve? And now you can see how I do that. You see how I'm holding that string with my left hand. I just like attach it to a center. And then with the right hand side, I grab the string and then I draw with a pencil. And it's like having this giant compass and I can get this perfect, perfect curves. It's another secret that you're learning tonight because it's all about like the tricks that uh, an illustrator shares with you, right? But eventually these things are so big, I need some some help. And what happens is that I invite friends to come over and I teach them how to grit the wall. And I don't know if you can see here, but that, that wall is great and people are climbing all over the place. And every person takes just one little area of the, the mural to draw. And this takes a good seven hours to do the whole wall. Sometimes you need some really daring daredevils out there because you have to go pretty high. Sometimes we're out there like 25 feet, 20 feet up in the air. So yeah. Um, some of the smaller kids stay at the bottom and some of the older kids and adults come and help me up at the top. But then what's really important about a mural, it's the color, right? Color needs to be there. So I choose my colors and then I try to design something that is very, very simple. So that is not intimidating. So anybody can participate, whether you are three years old or you're 90 years old, it doesn't matter, right? So this is where I sit here in the studio where I'm sitting right now. And I choose all these colors that I have to go buy at the paint store. And then I start painting. You can't be intimidated by this giant wall. And you're going to think, oh, my gosh, this is going to take forever, right? Because, I mean, look at my brush. It's not that big. This is going to take a while. 
Usually it takes a good five to six days to paint a wall this big, but I don't do it alone, right? It looks like I'm doing it here alone. Okay, that's not the whole story. You can see how strange they look, right? It's almost like I always feel only the edges first to make sure that they're really close to each other, really clean and tight. And then I realized sometimes there were all these kids staring at me like they're ready to jump at it. And like, can we go in too? We want to draw, we want to paint. So I invite him in. How? I put these tables in here and I fill them with this rainbow of colors from dark to light, from warm to cool. And then the kids can come over and choose any color they want to pick and then go out the wall. And what's really great about this, that you make friends. You make you meet people that you've never heard of, you never met. Maybe they're your neighbor next door and you've been living together five years and you never said hi to each other. This is a perfect opportunity to create community, to really come together and do something together, collaborate. And whatever I do is going to affect whatever the other person is. You learn responsibility, you learn about coordination. And it's so it's not just doing about it, it's not doing a beautiful piece, it's about working together. Uh, people come from different draws of life. Uh, moms are really welcome because they encourage you. And look how tiny this guy is, you know, and there's mom cheering him up. And I really needed this kid because, uh, boy, it's really hard for me to get that low on the on the ground there. So he was doing a great job. And then we bring, of course, you bring your friends. I bring ladders. We make sure that you don't climb too high. You know, we keep an eye on all the little ones to stay there. Uh, sometimes we're not a ladder. So we totally run out of ladders. So you need mom to help you out, right? Moms help out. Grandpa, grandpa helps out too. So the whole family is invited and they're included. Anybody can paint before you know it. The whole neighborhood is showing up to paint together, right? That's something that maybe you are familiar with. Maybe you've seen this somewhere. I wonder where you've seen this, right? Where the neighbors come. And we have these beautiful parties where there's music and there's tamales and there's all kinds of dancing going on. And then you learn from other cultures. And it's just such a beautiful day when we're finally putting the whole thing together, though. Hmm, where have you seen this before? I wonder why, right? Then I met these two incredible ladies. And these are Teresa and this is Isabel. And these wonderful ladies came one day and they told me, what, what are you doing? This is really amazing. You know, we like to see all this community. What's going on? And I said, well, you know, we are trying to create something, maybe something beautiful, right? So they came with this idea when they saw this beautiful girl. They said, hmm, this little girl, she's showing so much energy. Maybe she could be our character in our book. So here she is. There's, there's a lot of things that you can do. So I'm going to show you those before and after. Look at this wall, right? The, the top wall. Look how boring that is. But look how beautiful it's ready for color. It's asking you, come paint me. So this is what it looked like uh, 10 days before. And that's what it looked like just a week after, actually. It's the same wall. Here's another one. And what do you think of this one? Pretty dull, right? I mean, you wouldn't even give it a second thought. You walk by, you never even want to stop around because it's like there's nothing there. But after all of us come together, after four days or five days, the same wall looks like this. So it's really awesome, you guys. I'll give you one more example. Here's another one that you can see right here. And this is the team that helped me organize it. And this is what happened after just five or six days spending it together. Same wall, you guys. One last one. This was a really scary place where a lot of young uh, parents were taking their little kids on strollers back and forth to the store. The kids were going to school and it was kind of dark and it was really dirty, but it, it was the only way that you can actually go to school. And the community called me and they said, Mr. Lopez, is there a way that you can make this brighter? So, so it feels like we can actually be there and feel safe. And I said, absolutely, we can all do it together. And this is what we did. We created this beautiful piece coming across. And now on the right-hand side, they have a community garden. And they plant different plants every summer and spring. They put different plants and they, they grow herbs. And there's a whole committee that takes care of it. And they clean it up. And they make sure that it's always in really, really good shape. So what is the point of that? The point is that the mural, it's the force that keeps the community united, keeps it together, because everybody wants to come and take care of it. And then you take pride of it and you take ownership. And that's what's so important about a mural, a community mural is not the pretty thing with colors is because you create a sense of strong, united community, guys. OK, so look at the face of these kids. They're so proud because they know that they've, they did something so big 
They've never done something this big in their lifetime. And you can see how proud they are of their, their contribution. So uh, it's just amazing the friendships that you create. This is one of my favorite things that I do as an artist because sometimes working on the studio, uh, you're on your own. And going out there into the community, you feel like you're leaving something that a lot, it has a lot more meaning. So uh, I think that wraps it up for me. And uh, thank you for seeing these photos a little bit. And we are back in the studio again. And I like to invite you to, if you're ready, and if you have some paper like I do, and you have some uh, pencils, would you like to um, know how to draw a mural? Because I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So I'll teach you a few uh, tricks. These are illustrator tricks that I'll show to you. Um, sometimes drawing is really intimidating, right? And I'll give you a, an example, right? They say, oh, I, I want to do a mural with flowers, right? Um, so what I do first, I try to simplify everything, you guys. So what I do is I, I draw a lot of straight lines. I draw a lot of curves. I draw with a lot of circles. I draw with triangles. I draw with squares. You see where I'm getting at? It's I'm keeping things very, very geometric and simple. So I'll give you an example of that. Let's say that someone says, paint a mural with flowers. And I go, flowers, you know, they, they're very complex because a flower looks like this. And it has like all these details and it has this little, you know, the little stem and then it's got all these textures around and shading and the thing looks like this and the, you know, the leaves have all these detail. Oh my, this is going to take too long. So this is what I do, you guys. I think in these basic principles and I go, Curve, semicircle, 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 curve, straight line, straight line, straight line, half a circle, another curve, another half a circle, another curve, straight line, straight line. Boom. There it is. See, there's a flower that is a lot easier and less intimidating, right? This takes a little bit of practice and you need to see photos, but here we're just applying the principles of like basic shapes. And that's what I do with my murals, right? Um, I'll right. give you an example. Um, you wanna say like happiness, very simple, right? You wanna see a person that looks healthy, let's say a kid that looks healthy. There we go. This is the head, right? And then curve, his hand is up in the air. There's another curve and then you got a straight curve. Then you have another curve this way, straight line curve, another curve, and a straight line. But then how do you make him look like he's, it's, we're talking about health. Well, you put a heart inside and the fact that his hands are up, it looks like he's happy, he's exercising. So you're keeping things very, very, very simple, you guys. Um, so that's what I'm trying to say, right? I mean, a, a fish, here we go. Curve, curve, triangle, circle, straight line, semicircle, 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 straight line, semicircle, 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 straight line, straight line, straight line, straight, straight, straight. Do you see what I mean? It's keeping things really basic. And this really makes you feel like when you draw this whole thing that is so intimidating, it's gonna have a lot of unity, right? So um, those are the simple principles of doing a mural when it, that is really simple, very graphic and very stylized. So are you guys ready? Are you ready to do an actual mural? Let's give it a try, okay? I think they are. I hope this remembers, I think they are. So if you remember this and you practice this and you keep thing, you know, keep it in your mind that this is what you are doing, basically straight lines, straight and curves and basic uh, geometric shapes, you're gonna learn a lot, you guys. All right, here we go. This is gonna be now our mural. This is our wall, okay? And imagine if you are about this big, Raphael, one second. Sure. I just want to uh, clarify to everyone that they can uh, feel free to follow along at this point if they. Oh want yes, of course. Videos at home. So. Thank you, Kyle. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. I want everybody to follow me along this time. We are going to be doing a mural together. So why don't we start? If you have a piece of paper, why don't you try try to draw uh, a straight edge? If you can, usually what I do is I use, I cheat a little bit. So I use like the straight edge, and that's what I did. I actually just put this one across and I just drew a line and then I came up here and I drew another line 
And then I came this way and we drew that line over there and another one there. And uh, so if you guys are ready to do that, I'm waiting for you. And that's you right there. And it's a giant wall you're going to be designing. Isn't that amazing? Imagine if you're standing in front of that wall. It's, and it looks white and you go, wow, I have five days to paint this. This is going to be crazy, but it can be done, right? So if you're ready, if you've done like a little, um, what would you call this, a rectangle, a very long rectangle, if you're ready to go, let me know. And I'm going to show you some of the basic principles of what we need to do, okay? What do you think, Al? Do you think that maybe have, they have drawn now the outline, probably? They're good. I think they're ready. Yeah. Okay. So if they're ready, some of the things that I usually do too when I'm designing you guys is like circle guides. I use what's called French curves. Uh, so I got a bunch of them in the studio, right? I mean, I use sometimes this protractor. I use, of course, uh, smaller triangles. And all of these things, they really come in handy. And I'm sure some of you have done, if you're familiar with some of these, maybe you're not familiar with some. But um, the more guys that I have, the simpler it is for me. In this case, I'm just going to use my free hands. And I might just use one straight edge just a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is, is it's easier if you treat such a big area into sections, OK? So let's try to use this as sections. Instead of just thinking of the whole thing, we're going to concentrate on this area, and then in this area, and then in this area, and then four. So we're going to have one, two, three and four, four areas. So just quickly here, I'm just gonna draw something like this, a line. And then you, you, you may not see it right now because with this is with a pencil, you may see a little bit. Then I'm gonna draw another line right about um, somewhere in here, I guess. And then one more right over here, okay? So now I have four areas, one, two, three, and four. And this is going to be my first line that I'll draw. If you want to draw that with me, there it is. And then I'm going to just start doing things that are very, very graphic. So um, let's see that. Let's say that I want to paint a sun. So I go, okay, this one I can even divide into another half here, or maybe not perfectly half, but just right about here. I'll go right here. There we go. And then I think, okay, I want to do a tree. So remember what we did. Trees are very complex, right? There's all these branches and leaves and everything. It's like, oh my God, this is going to be just too long. This is going to take forever. But if we use the principle that I just show you, a tree could look like this. Trunk. Curves. You see that has the shape like a tree or a plant. You see how easy that was? I didn't have to go through every little thing. We are simplifying things. So if you can do this and follow along, you have the trunk and then you have all the, you know, the, the green part of the tree. And then you say, well, you know what? I'd like to have a sun up above here. So I said, okay, I'll have a sun right about here. This is where I use my, you can do it by freehand. I'm just going to use my, circle guide so that I can show you how I use it. And there it is. And then of course, you know, I think like, I, I like to start feeling spaces. I go, wow, there's a lot of space in here. I can feel like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna do something like, um, I'll just do something like that. Why? Who knows? Because I'm an artist. I just wanna create another color right there. So this is really cool. The whole idea is that you fill it in. It's, it's almost like you're designing um, fabric. Have you seen, have you noticed when you put a dress and it's full of like flowers and patterns, we're doing the same thing with, with a mural. So look, look, we've already solved a really good chunk of the mural, right? So the next thing that we're going to do now is um, a face. So I'm going to come here and if I do a face in this area, it's going to be too wide of a face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little shorter. My face is going to be only about this wide. And then I'll apply the same principle. I don't need to see the whole face. I just want to show part of it. And this is where you do editing. So you don't need to show the whole thing. You need to show only one half of it or one quarter of the way. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to do something like this. See how that is just a simple slope. So this is what I drew. I just drew this side of the face. And then 
I'm gonna do um, yeah something like um, you think okay curve straight and then a nose. All right, here comes the eye. Simple curve. Simple curve. And then I'll just put center of the eye right there with my circle. And then maybe a smaller one right there. Okay. Now, hair. Hair is so difficult too. There's so many curves and things, right? It's very intricate and complex. But if you do it in my system that I've been teaching you, hair could look just like this. Look, semicircle, semicircle, and semicircle. There we go. And now, of course, we want a friendly, smiley face, right? We want something that looks friendly, welcoming us. So we go like this. We do a curve that goes up, but it needs volume. It is just a little too light. We need to have a little more volume on that. So if you can do this, the upper lip and bottom lip, and see where I stop? I stop there because I'm designing just little sections. That's all I need. And you can see that there's a face in there. You don't need the whole thing because we want to add more things to it. And that's what's, that's the hardest part about being an artist. Where do you leave things and you don't have to add them all the time? So here, I can put another circle here because you know you want to fill things in. So you can say, well, I'm gonna put another circle. I just because just because I want to, right? And here maybe you can put um like a like a cheek, you know, like like his cheek or her cheek. You can do something like this. And then you say, hey, you know what it would be kind of cool if there's something that 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 represents growth, like you know, this is someone that is growing, like a, a kid that becomes a young adult or something. And that's when you use symbolism. Symbolism like like a plant. A plant grows too, right? You've seen plants when from seeds all the way into this mature, beautiful uh, tree. So maybe we can add something like this into the person that we are portraying. Why? Because we want to, right? That's the beauty of being an artist. You can just add things as you move along. So now look, we're almost halfway through the whole. Um, through the whole design. And then we say, okay, now we're gonna do something like this. I'm gonna do a curve because I don't want them to be all straight lines. So now I'm gonna design this curve that is gonna go like this slight curve. And here I'm gonna put another tree because I like sometimes to use symmetry to balance things out. And I think, you know what? I need some more like vegetation, you know? So you start thinking about what, what can I put in here? So you said, okay, but this time it's going to be taller. This one is a short one. This one is going to fill, fill the whole area, right? So I go like this and I go all the way to the edge and then I turn back. And then I go like this and then I go similar in shape. And then I use more of a straight thing like that. I do the same on the other side. I use symmetry. So I try to make it as similar as possible. Go up and voila. And then maybe I want to divide it into two different, I'm gonna add two different colors here. So there it is. So one is gonna be one color and the other one. So this is why I draw the straight line. And you notice I love circles, right? So maybe I can put a circle here. Maybe that represents fruit. Maybe it's a fruit tree. There's another one there. Maybe there's two over here. You don't have to be always equal. And then maybe there's none there. Maybe not, maybe I decided to put anything on that one. So it's all about using symmetry and sometimes it's about what do I leave behind? You know, I, I don't need to have it all equal all the time. Uh, okay, so here's another great example, a great opportunity. Birds, right? Yes. All right, we had a question in the chat. Um, someone said they were a photography student and uh, had uh, been exposed to the rule of thirds before. And mm -hmm. we're wondering if you used any sort of rule of thumb like that when you're planning out the space and sort of the perspective of your mural. Yeah, I think that mine is a lot is more instinctual too. It, it, I just do a lot of this instinctual thing where I think uh, I need to keep it simple because by the time we add color, this thing is so big that it's gonna, I want it to not look chaotic. 
You know, I don't want it to look like confetti. I want it to have some kind of unity of color. So a lot of it is just going back and forth and keeping the simplicity, though. Um, there's also the golden rule that you learn in school, you know, but in this case, I think uh, we're applying more just like the basic simples of, of being very um, stylistic, you know, just keeping everything very straight and curves and things. Um, all right. So here's another example of something I want to show you guys. Uh, let me see if I can do this. How's everybody doing, by the way? Everyone appears to be doing pretty well. Uh, All right, awesome. Along with you okay. and uh, lots of good discussion. So thank you so far. Beautiful. So let's say birds, because I want to do a bird. I want to include birds in this one, right? But birds are really complex, right? I mean, birds look like this, and it has you know their beaks, and then and then they call it oh, like this, and then they have a tail, and and then their feet are this way. But then there's a lot of feathers and blah 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 blah, right? And then you go, oh wow, this this is going to be a tough one. And then all of a sudden. It becomes a very complex shape that is not going to fit in my in my um, mural. But if I do this, watch what I do here. If I go like this and I go straight, curve, 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 straight, curve, and then I go gentle curve, circle, and then you can just do straight, straight. Straight, straight. You avoid all those little details and things, right? So th there's your bird. You can still see the bird very clearly, correct? So that's what I'm talking. And then, of course, you can add colors going this way. So this could be one color. This could be another color. You start dividing things. Here's another curve. That could be another color. Maybe the tail is a different color. So you divide that, and that's going to be a different color. But it's it's the same principle, guys. All right. So let's do birds. But these birds are flying. Their feet are not going to be down. They're going to be fine. And they're going to be intersecting each other, right? So here we go. We're going to go, let's see. Here we go. Curve. And then watch what I do with the wing. What I want to do now is I want to fill the space. How do I fill the space? With a wing. I go like this. Like that, I guess. Yeah, okay. And then I go like this. And then I go straight. And then I go like this, let me see, okay, yeah. There we go. So there's our bird filling that space. Now I want one to go the opposite way, okay? So I go. Another intersecting. So now we have this beautiful bird just going through at each other, right? They're going through, they're migrating in different ways. And man, see how quickly we're designing this mural? I mean, it's coming along, right, guys? You see how I did it all? Straight lines again, curves, gentle curves, straight line, curves, straight line. So very simple. And here, this is where you can do more things like this. You can actually say, okay, now I want to add maybe another plant. But this one is only going to be half of the plant. Why? I don't know just because I feel like it. So you go like this. And they're just flying through a forest, but you keep it very simple. See, that's it. It's just, you, you make the suggestion that they're going through the forest. And then of course, finally we have um, the last panel. And maybe here, there's a great opportunity to actually join the two panels together with another shape. So maybe there's a sun here. You can do something like this and there's a sun. And then you add lines. I like to do this a lot. I don't know if you can see this in my murals. There we go. So now some of these color is going to transfer and shapes are gonna transfer from one panel to the next. And of course here, now we can do our happy guy. Remember that happy guy that we designed, designed earlier about the happiness um, with a heart. We're gonna put him right here. Here's our guy. And then he's, this is, I'm gonna just divide his face into two, two colors. Here, you don't just put eyes if you don't, if you don't feel like, or you can put eyes if you want. In this case, I'm gonna leave it without. And um, I'm gonna go this way. Just like I showed before, remember?
and he's a happy person and he loves his neighbors. There we go. That's how we show that. Um, and then maybe there's some little birds flying with him, you know, because he loves to let he loves to let birds fly free. And they're just the same shape as this, except a little smaller. And then maybe here we have a cloud. So it's about filling space. So let's put a cloud by, uh, um, cloud by just doing semicircles. And um, what else could we put? We could put more plants. See, we need to fill all space, right? So we can do this. And then maybe here we can put a mountain. Curve, transfer to the other side. And there you go. So see how quickly we create a mural? So this looks a little strange, or we can even put another tiny bird. See, we need, we need to fill the room. There's, there's areas, you, you, you squeeze your eyes and you go, where can I use more stuff? Maybe you can add more things in here. You can add a, how about a butterfly? Here's a butterfly. And there you are, you guys. It's done. Basically, that's it, right? You fill everything with all these spaces. And all you need to do now is start filling it in with color, though. But this probably is the hardest part. Is like, how can I design a gigantic wall that makes sense, that looks like it's unified, and yet, um, you know, it's going to show a lot of diversity? And this is the way I've learned to do it. And this is how I wanted to share it with you guys. And of course, then you need to start filling in with color. So got my colors here. And uh, we can start by just adding things like this. You know, you said, okay, I'm going to start with uh, some beautiful warm color here. Now, a very important thing to when you design, people don't use enough black and white. I use a lot of black and white on this thing. And I want to tell you what I mean. Like, let's say that this area is going to be black. Even though it's a plant, I'm not afraid to use colors in very... Um, crazy way, right? I mean, usually plants are not black, but why not in the mural? I mean, that's why it's, 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 it's the beauty of being an artist, right? So I can feel this black because black, it helps unify something that has a lot of color. Black and white are going to be the unifying colors. Keep that in mind, you guys, right? So you can do this. And once you learn to use white without and black without feeling intimidated, it's going to be so much fun, you guys, because it's going to is what's going to keep the whole thing together. It's almost like when you get dressed, you know how they say that black matches with everything, every color that you put. The same principle applies with um, with doing murals. You just go and use black a lot and leave white, and you don't have to fill everything with just color. These are the unifying colors, black and white. Okay, so just to show you what I mean. Here we go. And Kyle, let me know how we do it on time because, you know, as an artist, we can get carried away and I could be here all night and then they're going to be three in the morning. I want to go, guys, are you still there? Hey, guys, it's three in the morning. Doing, so, uh, you're doing good on time. It's, uh, you've got about 20 minutes left. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, you know, so, so yeah, the whole idea is just to, to, to keep changing shapes. I mean, here you can do another shape like this. We're, let's start using some color too. Um, the, uh, a couple of the, the kids in the chat have asked them um, if you do not have some of the, the things that you have, like the rulers sure. or the things, yeah. what do you suggest to use for shapes and that kind of a thing? Well, you know, usually sometimes what I do, if you don't have a ruler, uh, I use like at the edge of a, of a book or you have a piece of cardboard that is straight. I use that a lot. Sometimes I don't have it with me, you guys. So I love to just grab something that is really straight and sturdy. And, and sometimes the best thing to do is just to do it freehand. I mean, I'm going to try my best to do something straight. Let's see if I can do it. Um, just by going slowly, you can do things pretty straight. But of course, sometimes if you don't have that, um, you, you just find a piece of cardboard or something that is a little straight or maybe one notebook that you have, like an old notebook and just, you know, the cover of the notebook and then use that as, as a guide. But I, I encourage you to just be free. Go free with this and just go very slow. Sometimes it's a little intimidating to do curves. A good way to do a curve, instead of just doing it like I do where I go like this in one stroke, you can go slow. You can go like this, back and forth, back and forth. See? See how I'm going back and forth? 
And this can help you have a little more control over your curves. See what I mean going back and forth? This gives you a little more control, okay? Versus going like this. Because that sometimes takes a little bit of practice. And sometimes in my case, if I had too much coffee, then it's not gonna look like that at all. It's gonna look more like this, you know? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, so here we go, you guys. So the whole thing now is that I want you to have some fun the rest of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Is that mine or yours, you guys? No. Oh, sorry about that. It, it was actually a scam. Can you believe that? It says scam lightning. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'm talking about now. Uh, you start filling out everything in one solid shape. The reason I do it all solid is because there's so many colors. If you start using too many colors in just one area, it's going to look too chaotic. Okay. So keep every single shape and area, every single area in one solid color. This is going to be one solid color. This is going to be one solid color because by the time you finish, it's supposed to look like this. Okay. Well, I'll save that for the end. I'll save that for the end. That's going to be the surprise. So we'll just keep doing this, fill it in. But remember, just keep it all one solid color. See, you're already halfway there, you guys. See, it's not that intimidating, right? And um, this is where you can actually like say, I'm going to leave this white, you know, just, or you can actually go yellow. Let's go yellow with this one. Why not? But you can let you can leave it white, and then you say, okay, now I'm gonna go um, with some kind of um, I don't know, like a dark brown underneath here. See how sometimes even my my colors are very similar in value; they're just a little bit darker. I look for something that is similar, so it doesn't go and jump all the way on the color wheel to the other side. I just keep I'm trying to keep them very close together. So I do this here. And uh, what are you using uh, right now to color? Right now, I'm using uh, oil pastels just because it's really is easy to do. If I did something with a wet thing like watercolor, I'm afraid that it would start running down. Uh, mm -hmm. If I use acrylics, I will have to use a, a hair dryer, and it would be very, very loud for you guys. It would be incredibly loud. So um, this is uh, probably the, the, the easiest way to do it for now, and I think it's easier for the kids to just coloring with color pencils if you have Prismacolors or crayons. And then let's see, I decided now the other color, I want the other color to be different. So maybe I'm gonna go now with, um, I don't know, this green, similar, but now see the other side is green. And uh, Raphael, I'm letting them know that um, mm -hmm. there will be a recording of the uh, lesson at the end. So oh, if wonderful. you feel like um, you can't keep up or if you're having a little bit of trouble, uh, don't feel like you have to do exactly what Mr. Lopez is doing. Well, not at all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, just have fun with it. Um, and yeah. if you want to, you can rewatch the recording afterwards and that will help you uh, finish your mural out. Absolutely. Thank you, Kyle, for reminding me. everyone that it's you're supposed to have fun. I mean, if you did your own version of this mural, this is great. I just try to teach you how I apply the principles that I've learned in art school so that we can create something that is very unifying and very simple and is very graphic. And uh, see how I'm leaving out the white? You know, why not? You know, we can leave white like that. Um, and again, like I said, use, use black. I love using black. This plant is going to be black. Don't ask me why. I love black. So there is that beautiful black plant. I don't know if there's any black plants in this planet, but maybe there is, and then they haven't been discovered yet. But there it is. Another place where I can use black is here. And then maybe this could be even thicker, you know, so it has a lot more impact. We can make this a lot thicker that way. And of course, I want this to be this beautiful solid black as well. So see how it starts to take shape, you guys? I mean, before you know it, in, in an hour or two, you can have this whole thing filled in completely. But like I said, try to keep, the, in, in, in today's lesson is just to keep things very, very uh, solid. This whole area should become solid. There you go. Let's see what else we can do. Okay, so this one could be a bit, maybe a little, or no, let's, let's use this pink here on this side. Again, sometimes I just decide to, 
only draw at a certain time and, the, and then I'm gonna change the color. So this is gonna be like a pink. And we're trying to use all the colors of the rainbow of humanity maybe so we can all feel like we are inclusive and included on our mural. So this one goes only up to here. And then I'll just speed up a little bit. I mean, of course, you guys can take more time later on with your drawing. And I'm sure your, your parents and your teachers and your librarian friends are gonna be super proud when you finish your, your own design. And here we go. And then there it is. And then I'm gonna do, oh, well, you know, might as well run this all the way here. The eye, why not? I don't need to use a white eye. I'm gonna just fill it in with pink as well. And this part as well. And then we're gonna run this all the way here. So how do you uh, approach choosing the colors that you choose for your murals? So that's a great question, Kyle. Think of it as a little bit as, um, the, I don't know if you guys have heard of the color wheel. And the color wheel has, it's the wheel with all the colors that are like the cool colors, which are like the purples and the blues and the cool um, um, greens. And then you move into the warm colors of the wheel, which is like when they get into the really nice, I'll show you an example. Here's a cool color. This is very cool. It reminds you of something that is cold and, you know, um, you know like a night, like a really night sky. Here's a very, very warm color. You see that? It doesn't this remind you of like fire? This is like a fiery thing. So this is a cool color. This is a white, the, the, the warm color. And there's a thing called the color wheel where all these blues and purples are on one side and all the warms like are the yellows and the reds and the oranges are on the other side of the wheel. So what I try to do is I try to select colors that are very close on the wheel. They're not jumping from side to side. I don't go from one side to the other. I don't go from warm to cool to warm again. I try to stay in the warm side and then I move slowly into the cool side. And that's how you keep a little bit of coordination. You can see these are all very, very warm colors, very warm colors. And I'm gonna keep using those for a while like this. This is a very warm pink. And then I put this orange that is also very, very, um, very cool. Now imagine if I put a dark blue in here this beautiful shape would have gotten lost, right? So you need to pick something light too. Think about that too. If um, Many times as an artist, you make the mistake of choosing something very dark right next to something already very dark. And the whole idea is to create contrast. If you have something dark, put something very light right next to, to it. If you have something light, put something very dark next to it to create all this very nice contrast around them. So this is how I, why I decided to use this beautiful hot orange next to the black. Because you also have favorite colors, Kyle. Purple and orange and you still my work. Okay. Then here, maybe I want to do, see how these are really bright? These are really, really bright. So maybe I need something a little more uh, toned down. So it's not so bright, 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 bright. So I'm going to go with something a little more muted, guys. And for that, I'm going to choose something like this. See, it's not as bright as the orange. It's a little more toned down. So I'll use that for this and look how close that is to this. So this is where you start to feel like there's some kind of a unity in the color. And this one is not as bright or as intense. It's a little more toned down. So color is very difficult. It's a lot of decisions that you need to make. So I encourage you guys to Google the color wheel and learn more about cool colors and warm colors. And then there's, there's, of course, there's a lot of other things like uh, shades. Shades are like the dark versions of the colors and tints are the light versions. And I'm sure some of our kids are going like, what are you talking about now? But anyways, it's all fun to learn, you guys. This is all the things that you learn when you go to art school. Um, now let's go with a darker color here. We're going to go with this darker color. See, I'm choosing something that is very close in value to this pink. Very close, but it's actually... Let's choose this one. It's a little bit darker here, this one. See how close it is in value? Very, very close in value. And yet it's a little bit darker, just a tiny bit darker. So I'm trying to stay close in the color wheel from one color to the next by doing this. And I hope you're having fun, you guys, because this is really great. This really makes my day go by so fast. And 
And it, it, you know what's great too, that you have to do this. I get to do this every day. I love doing this every day. Just call or get up in the morning. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. All right, so now let's see. Now I want to do um, something more like this, like a little teal things. Let's go into, move into the cool. Let's move into some cool colors too. This is a very cool green and yet it's very, very light in color. It's almost whitish. We'll use that one right there. And then we'll use it right around this area. And here. A few of our uh, uh, attendees are wondering if uh, uh -huh. you're working on any kind of mural at the moment and um, if they were interested in getting involved in a public art, what would be a good way for them to do that? Good question. Um, sadly, because of the, um, the nature of our, our um, murals, because they are community murals and because of COVID, we, were able, we weren't able to create any murals this last year. So we're waiting for things to uh, turn around a little bit. And once it turns around, we are ready to get back into it. There was a mural that we had to put on hold in, um, in Virginia and the East Coast. And a bunch of kids are going to be involved in that one. And, you know, they're going to have to wait another year, perhaps. Who knows? But the best thing to do is to actually uh, create a design, go out there in the neighborhood, take a photo of a place that really would need a mural, that really, really is screaming for a mural. And, and then try to, you know, in Photoshop, sometimes I use Photoshop. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but in Photoshop, you can actually paste your design into the mural, into the wall. And then that, that, that's how I, I did. I, I got a bunch of jobs this way. I just went to the owner of the building and I said, I noticed that your building is not looking too well lately, you know, it's tagged and everything, but we're ready to do this. We are willing to do this. I have a, 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 a great group of artists ready to go. And, um, you know, nine out of 10 times they're going to go, yes, let's do it. You know, yeah, you need any help from me? It's like, we, we could use some paint. You know, we can use a little help in that. But we have the ganas, we have the will, we have the people, we can organize it. And that's how we help. That's how the whole thing started. It started with uh, us asking people, showing them what we could do, and then actually proving it that we could do it, though. So, yeah, I encourage you to, to go out there and, and find in the neighborhood buildings and talk to the neighbors and say, would you be willing to work with us and talk to the, the owners and say, this is what we can do. And I know it's possible because it happened to us, right? So um, you keep moving along. I mean, you do now, let's try some greens in here. I'm gonna do a green for the, um, like a bright green for this guy, why not? I don't know if there's any green, I'm sure that, oh yeah, parrots, parrots are green, right? There we go, even though this doesn't look like a parrot. But again, you guys see, all I'm doing is, I'm just keeping it all the same color all the way across because once you put it all together, this thing is gonna look really, really bright and colorful and you don't want it to be too chaotic. The whole idea is to, how do you control this whole thing, right? There it is. And then maybe this, um, this one is gonna, oh, I love purples. Maybe I should do a purple here. What if I use, okay, I'm gonna, this one is gonna be a purple now. And one more question. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so about how long does your average mural take to complete? Well, here's another great question, uh, Kyle. What happens is because we have limited budgets and limited time, usually traditional murals will take up to a month to two months to create, right? But when you're doing a community mural, Kids are in school, uh, they can only paint on the weekends. And that's the reason why we create these really, really basic murals, very, very stylized, but, but they're, they're beautiful. They're simple, but they're very stylized. And uh, so on average, when you use this principle of super um, uh, simple shapes, it would take an average between five to seven days. So a lot of the people that are able to join us during working days, uh, what happens is they say, I'm gonna be working until five o'clock but then at 5.30, I'll be here and I can help you between 5 and 6 or 6.30. Some people say, you, you know, I have an afternoon job, so I'll help you in the morning. So we coordinate people. We actually create a list of volunteers. And then the volunteers um, show up. They, they said, okay, someone's going to show, you know, I have so many people that are going to show up at a certain time. And then they're going to be replaced by other people. And then what we do is that at the very, very end, this is when we bring the kids. Uh, as you can see, this is very high. If this is you. We don't want kids painting this whole area, right? This area is, is gonna be for the adults, but the little kids are gonna be painting the bottom part. So we make sure that they are not climbing very high. we we'll always have adult supervision and the kids are focusing on the whole bottom part of the murals though. 
So by the time the kids come, let's say on a Saturday or a Sunday, which is their free day, this could take only about eight hours to compete, to, com to complete the whole mural though. In eight hours, we can do it. So, um, but it's, it, it's about five to, to seven days, Kyle. Kind of. That's great. Go. Um, one more question from the, <laughs> the group. So who is your favorite artist? And just- Oh, you know, God, I have so many. I mean, I love people like uh, Paul Clay. Paul Clay is someone that, that really inspires me because of his textures and shapes. And he does a lot of things that look like, uh, like fabric and tapestry. Uh, of, of course, as an illustrator, I love uh, Leo Leone. I loved him as a children's book illustrator. Eric Carl, I like his simplicity. I think he really, has, he has this a very um, approachable style that, that little kids can relate to. Um, so, and I, I've always been attracted to very graphic things. Uh, my parents were architects. So I was very attracted to that whole mid-century clean lines thing. And I'm still attracted, as you can see, I love to do things with that are very, very clean with lines though. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it, it's um, there, there's so many. I mean, I could I could keep naming people, um, but I would those three things, those three artists just come to to, to my my head right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're just about at time. We've got about four or five minutes left. All right, let's just wrap it up right here. Do this last shape here, you guys. And of course, oh, one more thing that I need to show you. I think this is very important is that sometimes you need a little strength in your mural and you can do it by maybe doing some lines really thick like look how thin this line is on the face but if we go like this and we make it thicker it's going to have a lot more visual impact right so we can make this really really thick and of course because it's kind of waxy it doesn't work but but you can do that and then just achieve a lot more contrast between um you know with between the lines and color and everything else so this is it's really fun you guys you know the principles now it's all about keeping things straight curves using uh, graphic shapes or geometric shapes and it's going to be it's going to feel less intimidating way less intimidating and you can do things really easy and eventually if you do this very slowly uh you'll end up with something like this there we go you see what I mean? Now you can see that, and that's what we do. And this will look just like that if we put it into the wall. So there you go, guys. Um, I hope you have fun. I had a great time. And uh, if there's any more questions, let me know. Uh, this has been really, um, it's been a while. It's been a while since I, I did any uh, designs here. So this is very cool. One more question for you. Sure. Um, we have, what is your favorite color? My favorite colors are three. And I like it. I was talking about black. I think I love black because it unifies things. I love uh, purple because it's just, there's something cool about purple. I don't know what it is, sophisticated. And it also means royalty in, in certain places, like in Mexico, purple. And even I, I started using the purple right here. And then orange and purple go really well together. I noticed that in my illustrations, I noticed that when I put the two together, I like that. And they're both in both ends of the uh, color wheel. One is in the cool side and purple is in the cool side. And of course, orange is on the warm side. But the magic color for me is black. Black is always going to unify things. And uh, I guess you can ask the, um, fashion designers, right? That's why they do so much stuff in black because when you, you wear black, then you could pop color on top of that black that that, that color is really gonna pop out. And that's what we're trying to do here too. We're trying to make things really pop by using black. And people don't use black enough. So another tip. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, guys. We're down here to the last minute. I just wanna say thank you again to Mr. Lopez for coming and uh, doing this for us. Uh, thank you again to Silicon Valley Reads for hosting this program. And I hope everybody had a good time. Uh, Mr. Lopez, anything else you want to leave them with? I just wanted to say thank you again for being here this afternoon, guys. I had a wonderful time. It's been a while since I designed a mural. Uh, it's great to teach something that I've learned so many years ago. And it's great that you had, I had this very receptive audience today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you finish your project and uh, share with your family and friends. And I hope you learned something new today. So thanks again. It was an honor being with you guys. Thank you very have much. Have a great evening. Everyone have a good day.